So I've been waiting to do this video for a while now. Um, we are going to be comparing what is, in my opinion, arguably the budget king of CPU coolers, which is the Thermalright Peerless Assassin 120. It also comes in the SE version. I have no idea what that stands for. It could be second edition, uh, special edition. I'm not sure. And we're going to compare that against what is probably going to be the new budget king of CPU coolers, and that is the Thermalright Phantom Spirit 120, and it also comes in an SE version and a non-SE version. Uh, both of these are roughly identical in specs. Um, they are uh, 110 millimeters this way on both of them. They're 125 uh, millimeters, eh, which way am I looking here? This way. And then the Peerless Assassin, the non-SE version, is slightly higher at 157 millimeters versus 154 millimeters and what makes this one a little bit like not that kind of this makes it a little more deceiving as far as the height goes is that the uh, heat pipes stick out they're not covered off they're not capped and they don't have any uh, heat fins going right up to the top of the heat pipe whereas with the non-SE version those uh, fins go right up to the very top and are capped off now, for the most part, these come, both of them, in a variety of different looks. There's non-ARGB, non there's ARGB. As you can see, this one's non-ARGB. This one is ARGB. It can come in gray, black, white. There are a bunch of different looks to fit whatever build you're going for. But what piques my interest between the two to see how well the... Phantom Spirit is going to hold up against the Peerless Assassin is that the Peerless Assassin only has six heat pipes, as you can see here. The Phantom Spirit, on the other hand, has seven heat pipes. That is the big difference between the two. Uh, aside from the non-SE version having a couple extra fins, that is the biggest difference. There's the extra heat pipe, so I'll be curious to see how much difference that extra heat pipe adds to the cooling, being able to disperse the heat. As well, when you look at the bottom of it, it's hard to see when you're on camera, but the uh, the copper heat pipe, uh, heat plate, the one on the Phantom Spirit, is slightly bigger to accommodate that actual heat pipe versus the uh, Peerless Assassin. It, it, it is a slightly smaller. So this would probably be better for slightly larger CPUs with a larger IHS, uh, probably something like the LGA 1700 for Intel. Their, uh, their IHSs are slightly bigger versus like the AM5 and AM4 CPUs. They are uh, a little bit smaller in size. Oh, the only, I guess the only other thing I would like to note is that the Peerless Assassin, at least the one that uh, is non ARGB, has braided power cables, whereas the Phantom Spirit just has your black, uh, jet black plastic cables. So there's no braiding. So this one, the uh, Thermalright Peerless Assassin, I couldn't really find any information on the website. I had to go to Amazon, and it was saying that the Peerless Assassin is capable of cooling a, C a CPU outputting about 245 watts, whereas the Phantom Spirit can handle 280 watts. Uh, in my test, we will be using the uh, 5900X on a B550 Tomahawk motherboard. And at full under um, Cinebench R23 doing all cores, it can output about 200 watts. So it's not going to be reaching the, the max output that this can handle or this one. And then we'll also be trying it out with only six cores active. And that goes to around 130 watts, which is more normal for most other CPUs like a 5800X or something like that. And I'll also be doing it, uh, my testing is done two parts. So again, all cores, so all 12 cores will be used. Then we'll do all six cores, it's only six cores being used. And we also will be adjusting the fan speed to only 38 decibels. So I'll be doing the testing in my new, essentially open air test bench. And what that is, is a Thermaltake Core P3 uh, TG Pro. I'm assuming that's a G, could be a 6 uh, Pro, and it is completely wide open, so uh, there won't be any restriction to airflow. Now, the reason why I call these essentially the budget king for CPU coolers 
is they both roughly come in at like $35, give or take a few bucks, depending on which one you're going to go with for ARGB, non-ARGB, white, black, all that. Uh, they are dual tower, uh, which offers a lot of heat dispersion because it has two fans, two towers. And these are comparable to something that costs double or triple. The Be Quiet 90 Dark Rock Pro comes in at around $90. And then there's also the Noctua NH-D15, which comes in at around $110. So those two CPU coolers were rated about the same uh, kind of wattage that they can handle are substantially more expensive than Thermalite. So this allows you to be able to take that money and allocate it towards getting a better CPU or GPU and still have really good cooling solution for those for your CPUs so you don't have to worry about any kind of overheating. So in no way did I come close to meeting, meeting the uh, max power that these are supposed to be able to handle. You know, like I said, this is about 250 and this is about 280. Uh, the max power that the, it's not overclocked, so the max power that my 5900X uh, was drawing was 200 watts of power. So at 100% um, CPU speed, the thermal right was able to achieve 78.4 degrees. And that came in at 50 decibels. So these fans did come in a little bit louder. I couldn't find any information on any, if there was any redesign of the fans or anything like that. But based on the testing at max 100% uh, fan speed, this came in at 50 watts or 50 decibels. Whereas the Phantom Spirit uh, achieved 78.1 degrees Celsius, so very comparable um, heating performance, like cooling performance. But the fans came in at 45 decibels, so five decibels lower than the Peerless Assassin. When I adjusted it to 38 decibels for the fan speed, the Thermalite Peerless Assassin came in at 79.8 degrees Celsius and the Phantom Spirit came in at 79.4 degrees Celsius. So again, very comparable uh, cooling when using a 5900X. So then I had went in and I disabled six of the 12 cores. So at six cores, uh, again, using Cinevench R23, uh, maxing those six cores out the at 100 percent the the temperature reached was 71.3 degrees celsius for the peerless assassin and again with the uh, phantom spirit it was also 71.3 degrees celsius turning the uh, fan speed down to reach 38 decibels the thermal right peerless assassin came in at 72.8 uh, degrees celsius and the Phantom Spirit came in at 72 degrees. So pretty much based on the testing that I did, uh, whether 12 cores or six cores active, which worked out to 200 watts or around 130 watts of power, they both came within pretty much the same performance. Really can't recommend one over the other. It's gonna boil down to A, uh, which one can you get based on uh, the style, uh, ARGB, non-ARGB, black, white, which one's in stock, which style you like better, and price. If you can get one over the other cheaper, then fantastic, uh, go for that. Otherwise, at uh, for anything under 200 watts, you're going to see the same performance. However, the one biggest difference was at max speed, the Phantom Spirit does come in five decibels lower. But really, that's gonna matter if you are, it's gonna matter if you're doing this more from a productivity standpoint, less from say a gaming or the day to day standpoint, because you're never going to be utilizing that CPU to its max potential unless you are doing something uh, productivity wise and all 12 cores are being utilized. Then you will notice that the fan speed does come uh, or the fan noise uh, will, you'll benefit by going with the Phantom Spirit.